For more than 14 years, Richard Petty stood at the helm of the juggernaut of sports business in Canada. As president and CEO of Maple Leaf Sport and Entertainment, he oversaw the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Raptors, and Toronto FC soccer until his retirement in 2012. He documents what it takes to be a leader in his new book, 21 Leadership Lessons, Successes, Failures, and Discoveries from a Life in Business and Sports. And we welcome back to TVO, Richard Petty. Nice it's, to see you again. It's nice to be on the, the show again. Uh, 21 leadership lessons. Mm -hmm. Why 21? Well, uh, I believe that the kind of jumping off spot between young people and young adult is 21. And all of these students that are coming up in university are going to compete and find their opportunities and challenges in the 21st century. Let's go through some of them. But just before we do, um, I guess some people think vision statements are kind of hokey. Other people like you think they're really important. How come? Well, I, it was probably the number one management technique in the 80s when Search of Excellence came out, and all the CEOs were buying the book and doing it. And there's still a number of companies that, that follow that. It just works for me. It, it's, it's probably the foundation. No, it's definitely the foundation of my leadership beliefs. I believe personally you should have a vision. Uh, corporately you should have a vision and then the value so how you deliver in the vision and what you're accountable for it helps you make decisions and it should be short and punchy and pithy yeah I mean I've seen the ones that are 200 words long no one remembers it I got ours down to 18 words so when everyone you, everyone in our company knew them at Maple Leaf Sports Maple and Entertainment Maple Leaf Sports 18 words do you remember what they were sure go ahead uh, was win now I had to explain that <laughs> win on and off the playing field okay. excite our fans uh, inspire our people, dedicate it to our teams, and be leaders in the community. That sums it up nicely, yeah. actually. And you know what the people learn? What does it mean to excite every fan? Well, it's, it's customer service, it's the game entertainment, it's the food you serve, and hopefully the product on the ice. That will come. <laughs> that will come. We still believe. Here's a, an excerpt from the book. As a leader, I knew to always include specific recognition for those who were positively contributing to the solutions. Criticism for those not contributing was always done in private. I never screamed. I never swore. If a department of an individual was screwing up, then we took it off to the side. I have absolutely no time for screaming bullies who believe that motivating by fear is effective. My strong belief is that being admired gives you much more leadership power than being feared. What I found interesting about that position is that that kind of flies in the face of what we think every coach in pro sports today believes, which is you lead through fear and intimidation. Isn't that the case? Well, listen, I'm not, I am not. said that's my leadership strategy. I mean, is it Forbes or Fortune that prints out the 10 toughest bosses? And if you look at those bosses, they're screamers and yellers and do all kinds of nasty things in public to their employees. Even some of the really accomplished ones, if you read the Elon Musk book or the Steve Jobs book, you know, the, the Edisons of their day, the, uh, but, and, and just wonderful inventors that changed the 21st century. But brutal but, guys. But brutal guys. I, I couldn't work for them. So in the coaching side, yes, yeah, some are that way. I, I always had trouble, and I think the coach ultimately has trouble, when he calls the player out publicly. And, uh, you know, they, they change coaches in Columbus after seven games, and the coach calls out their, their star center, who's 21, like in the first day. Mm. You, don't, you shouldn't do that. I, and I don't think coaches should do that. I think sometimes they get very frustrated, and they do. Lesson number 18, the challenge of winning it all. You, uh, you are candid enough to admit early in the book that you get this question all the time, so you're going to get this question once again. <laughs> it's well rehearsed. Under, <laughs> what under, a shock. <laughs> under your leadership, your company was unbelievably profitable. Mm -hmm. The seats were full. The beer was flowing. You guys, as a case study in how to do business, were a bang-up job. But, of course, none of your teams won championships. Should that taint your record as CEO? Well, I, I say right off the front that, uh, you know, we win on and off the playing field, and we won on the playing field, uh, off the playing field, as you pointed out. You know, that's my shortfall, and that's why I've always admitted fallibility on that side. But I talk about, uh, you know, I used an FAQ session right at the front and addressed that, why you should lead this why you should b believe my lessons, because it, it did work. There's a, gr a lot of great leadership experience there. And so I think I still have something relevant and meaningful to say. Um, yeah, I didn't deliver. I, I, my one regret is I never won a ring in any sport. Um, I'll always regret that. In, in, in hockey, it, it, I, my name would have gone on the Stanley Cup. That's the tradition that the president of the company gets on that. So I'm, it's never going to happen. I'm, I'm done. And you're OK with that? Well, it's, I wish I wasn't getting these questions. And, and you know, there's still, I, I probably still get a tweet or an email every few days 
saying I, I, I'm, they're still blaming the Leafs' performance on me. Still. You know what you should do when they do that? Mm. Show them your T4. <laughs> Seriously, you did okay, right? Well, I like to point out that we did all kinds of great things. Like, we brought soccer to this town. Right. We built Air Canada Centre with our own money. We built BMO, um, Field. We, BMO Field. We brought a, a billion dollars worth of infrastructure to this city. And, and then all the programming that goes with it, all of the you know, refurbishing rinks and pitches and basketball courts and moving our people in the community to, to coach and, and, and teach young people in the community. We did marvelous things. That was, you know, be leaders in the community value. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we left a real legacy. And, you know, I was there with Larry Tannenbaum. We brought the NBA to Canada. Mm -hmm. We didn't get the team, but we brought the, the thing. So I'm very proud of my legacy in that way. It would be complete if I had a ring in one of those three leagues. Lesson five, embrace contrary thinking. How come? Well, I think if we all think alike, uh, then some of us are redundant. And there's this, uh, what great quote by Ruth Simmons, uh, one goes stronger when one encounters uh, the opposing view. And I, I really wanted to hear contrary thinkers. I didn't have all of the answers. I want to be challenged. Now, I don't want the, the, the consistently negative naysayer mm -hmm. I don't have time for that, but you know, push back. I want to hear what you have to say. You believe in the concept of the loyal opposition within the company? Yeah, yeah. And I add, I, I you know, I recommend uh, 21 leaders in there, and my general counsel, executive vice president, Robin Bruner, was my best contrary thinker, and she would challenge me, and and you know, I'd say sometimes I'd agree with her, sometimes I'd modify, and sometimes I'd say no. Interesting thing, what she said to me was, I can do that because I know you'll listen to me. And I, that's a real compliment. So, yeah, I believe in contrary thinkers. And, and those companies that it's all one person and they've got this, it's going to be lesser company. Are most bosses lousy listeners? I don't want to say most. I, I think it's, it's kind of a continuum. You have some that don't listen at all. It's all their stuff. There's a whole bunch in the middle at probably at different times. And then there's some that are, are active listeners. And you were. I like to think I am. I mean, I like to think I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to bounce around here. Lesson 16, walk the talk, mm -hmm. which means what? Well, it's, it's not just what you say, it's what you do. And I was a great believer in walking the talk. I, God, it goes way back. When I was running Hostess, I would get on the truck at 7 o'clock in the morning, delivery truck, and, and go to stores with my uh, sales, uh, driver salesman, and I'd put up uh, potato chips. Uh, racks. It, when I ran Green Giant Pillsbury, I worked on the line with uh, and corn, the Green Giant Corn Line or the Pillsbury Pizza Line. When I went to Sky Dome, I, I cleaned up between Disney on Ice shows. And, and if, the, if the door was backed up, I'd open up another uh, a gate and I would take tickets. So I've always done that. I walk around. I did it for a bunch of reasons. One, I learned a lot. I'd seen things. And, and I think if you walk around with a, with, an, a, with a brain that's open to seeing not only problems, but ideas, uh, it flows. And, you know, walking around, say, trying to know your employees' names or saying hello to the, all of them, that's really, really powerful. So it worked for me. One thing, uh, again, I learned in this book, uh, handwritten thank you notes, eh? You're a big believer Huge. in that. Huge. Uh, why do you think that's, I mean, in this day of email everything, social media everything, and electronic that's everything. that's exactly why you should do it. Hmm. You know, at least some people are sending, uh, e uh, sending uh, email thanks. That, that's important. But it just breaks through the clutter. I mean, I've been doing it probably very aggressively since the early 80s. In fact, I had personal cards. Hostess, it was the Hostess Munchies, Green Giant. It was the Pillsbury Doughboy uh, and, and, the little, and the Green Giant, et cetera, et cetera. And they were always blank. And I would write probably about three a day. So it might be a note, congratulations to someone you just got promoted. Most of them were internal. When I left Hostess, Pillsbury, uh, Sky Dome and Maple Leaf Sports, I wrote hundreds of notes to my employees, like a couple hundred each time. Hmm. My final advice, you say in the book, my final advice is to work hard to get your ticket punched. Along the way, you are likely to receive many job offers, but don't just drift from opportunity to opportunity, no matter how good the chance of promotion or how attractive the salary. Always have your final destination, your dream, in mind and make purposeful, strategic choices about the path you take to get there. Let's unpack that a bit. Get your ticket punched. What does that mean? Well, you know, the old days you'd be on a train and the guy would come down after each stop and you get a punch so you know that you've you paid your ticket all the way to the end of the line. Uh, so I just used that. That I, I, I compared that as I had this dream to run a basketball team. And for 29 years, I got my ticket punched. I spent 19 years in consumer products, learning about marketing and sales and finance, et cetera. I went to Skydome. I learned how to put on events. 
I learned to work with the Argos and the Blue Jays. I sold suites. I learned how to put on live concerts, like 30 a year. Uh, then we do not get the basketball team, so I go on to TSN. I learn, uh, you know, sports reporting, live sports broadcasting. I launched TSN.ca. So in 1996, after 29 years, who has their ticket punched more than me? Maybe Paul Beeston, but no one else in the country. I got the job. And so I recommend to people that they, they do that. What if there will be lots of people, the 21-year-olds that you're aiming this book mm -hmm. at, so to speak, uh, who don't have the master plan, who don't know what the final destination is. Everybody's maturing later in life these days. And I get that a lot because the students will say, I don't have a dream. Right. So I just say, well, just keep working, do things that you like, read, expose yourself to as much as you, as you can, and maybe it'll come to you. Uh, but, you know, I was fortunate in a fashion that I wrote it down when I was 20. I know that's rare, but I cite in my book, uh, Chris Hadfield wanted to be an astronaut at nine. Mm. I talk about Muggsy Bowes, uh, who's the smallest player to ever uh, play in the NBA. He always wanted to be a basketball player. He's five foot three, and he got there. Mm. I also talk about um, others who, who had dreams. So, I, I, you know, it's been proven. If you have a dream, and importantly, if you write it down, you're going to have more success. It doesn't mean you will have definitely success, but statistically, that person will have more success than someone who doesn't. You're 69 now. 69 in January. Don't 60, push it. Sorry. Sorry. It's another 60 days. You look damn good for 69, <laughs> i got to tell you. Good clothes. That's what I would say. Harry Rosen, good clothes. Do you ever want to run a company again? No, I don't think so. I really don't. I, I, but you don't get approached on being an interim CEO. If the right one for, like, say, 12 months, 18 months came along, and it fit my, my expertise, which is brands, customer service, um, yeah, I'd look at that. Depend, you know, how much they're willing to pay me because I am retired and comfortably. Uh, and if I thought there was a good challenge and I wasn't too far away from my wife, Colleen, I'd consider it. Have you ever considered politics? Oh, I think in back in my mind, I did a bit. Uh, working on the last campaign, uh, municipal campaign here, I saw what's involved and, and the preparation needed years in advance. You backed Olivia Chow. I did. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about it when, when I was on here last. Yep. And big surprise to everyone. And I, I thought Olivia would be a good candidate. And uh, so I watched it up close. And it's, it's a really tough job. You know, I had lunch with Kristen Wong Tan this morning, a great counselor in, in my writing, or ward. And she was telling me just how hard she's working. Mm -hmm. And I believe she is. She's a good counselor. She's, you know, dawn to dusk. There are 21 leadership lessons in this book, successes, failures, and discoveries from a life in business and sports. Richard Petty, may we both live long enough to see the blue and white hoist the Stanley Cup, albeit without your name on it, but it would still be pretty cool. And that'd be pretty cool. I, I, be hope, pretty cool. I wish them the best. They're investing a lot of management, a lot yeah. of brain power there. They, they're putting money behind it. I hope so, too. Amen. Thanks so much. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.